For a long time now, I have loved RSS feeds. I've loved them for years, especially back in the early days of my channel when I was running a Arch Linux ThinkPad, which I still am planning to bring back at some point. I'm already working on it, believe me. And I just love how simple, well, really simple syndication, RSS. Uh, I love using them, especially for content you might not expect you can use them for. We're going to get into all of that, but what I want to show you today is how to completely set up your own self-hosted RSS reading service, and it's called Comma Feed, and it's pretty awesome. So I did some research on what are the options for RSS feed uh, services that you can spin up because home lab, and there were, there were a few contenders, but ultimately Comma Feed won out just based on the UI, the UX, and just, it's nice. So we're gonna go into it right now. So like I said, Comma Feed is my reader now of choice, self-hosted and totally rad. And it is completely open source, so it's on GitHub. Uh, links for everything I show and mention will be in the description or wherever I put it. Uh, but it's a pretty awesome service. It's got some decent support. It's fairly robust. It's got everything I really wanted and needed from a service. So popping over to the Docker Hub page for this, there are several different options you have, and I played around with several of these. Let me zoom in here for you. Um, if you wanted to spin it up like you got, well, if you got like Docker already running and you want to play around with the service just briefly, then you can grab this command from Docker, the Docker Hub page for comma feed, run it in your command line, just like copy, paste, and run that command, and it will spin up that application. I don't want to do that though. Next, you have some other options for Docker Compose. I typically prefer using Docker Compose for all of the things, especially because I run all of my containers in Portainer, which is this which a Docker stack, or in this case, Docker Compose, will let you spin up multiple containers, group them visually in this UI, and you've probably already seen my home lab review video, maybe not, but I go over what my setup is for like how I containerize just about everything, if not attempting to put everything into containers. So that's why I use Docker Compose, essentially. And there's a couple options. This first one, essentially it has an internal database. You don't want to really leave it on this option but this is like great if you want to really like i want to try it out but not fully really commit to it but i want to like spin it up and not just have it in you know on my desktop client maybe i want to put this on to a server run it for a while and see how it works and if i like it or not and i did that briefly just to see like hey what is the ux on this like how is it like using this and i'm like wow this is actually really awesome so then you move into the next phase of things where you know, reading the docs, you change from latest dash h2 to whatever sort of uh, database you're going to be using. And I, of course, have my own self-hosted Postgres database where I keep all of my stuff and prefer to push all of my data to. I don't like having everything in just like Docker volumes, personally. I want it all centralized in my master database. And if you copy all of this, um, well, I don't spin up a copy of a... Or a, a Postgres database specific for the service, because this would be exactly what I just mentioned. I don't want my databases for each service to be just random Docker volumes. So I actually changed um, all of this to actually be the credentials for my Postgres database. And so now it sends all of the data and everything to my Postgres database. So it will require a little bit of finagling. Um, and yeah, it supports MariaDB, MySQL, and Postgres, so Postgres for the win. And the rest of this, I didn't really, I don't really need too much with. So you can run those, and you will get the service spun up, running. You can do that on your local machine, try it out, test it out, play with it, see what you think. I liked it, so on Portainer, I threw it all up into uh, a stack, or in this case, Docker Compose. So I do have my own proxy network because I have traffic running for reverse proxy, but if you're not doing anything complex like that, you can ignore that. Uh, but basically everything else is kind of what you saw in the docs. Um, the image is latest dash Postgres because I'm running it with a Postgres database in the back end. Now the network's proxy stuff, this is again stuff for my reverse proxy, not necessary for you unless you're doing that. And then the environment, what I did is I used the same JDBC URL which is, uh, where is it? There it is. This, 
So all of that's the same, except for like the actual, like where's the database living, IP address, what user and what database and all of that. And so it is, I'm not gonna show you that URL because it does have like some stuff. I don't want people to just know my database IP address, but um, I have that URL. It's basically the same structure, JDBC. And then the username is comma feed. So I like to make users for each individual service and their own database. So only that user has access to that database and they don't have access to any other databases unless they explicitly need it, like say Grafana or something. So it's the comma feed user with a password that I defined for that user going to my database at that URL. And then this is just part of the original stack, deploy resources limit the memory to, I guess a quarter of a gig or something. And the ports, uh, you could leave it as 8082 if you're just running it on your system, but I always forget to zoom in. But personally, I, on my um, Docker stuff, I like to send all of my stuff to uh, these ephemeral addresses, and then I just increment them from there. So I know where they're all, they're all organized and I don't accidentally step on another service's toes, but whatever. So that's my actual um, URL, uh, well, port. And then I use reverse proxy stuff to say like, hey, my Docker host at this port is going to be human readable name for the service, which is what you'll see. And then I do have one volume, but it's not for the database. It's for the configuration file. And the configuration file, I believe I have not touched. Ugh, really, too much zoom. But I didn't really touch any of this. I believe it's all just auto created. And if it's not, I probably just copied it from a default thing and dropped it here. Whatever, I don't remember what, what happened. And I never look at this because I don't need to. I don't need to. So put that back. Now, finally, after you spin up this application, what does it look like? It looks pretty awesome. So uh, you can see the little fav, uh, fav icon, fav icon, I don't know how I pronounce that, but it's got the actual RSS feed like logo icon and then it says 5K because I have like 5,000 unread items. So I'd actually just noticed that it the, the fav icon updates with the number of unread um, items there. Um, I'm not gonna be panicking about this API key, I'll be regenerating it, but uh, I forgot to reset the view. So essentially, this is what you get. Um, zoom in again, because I always forget. So you have a sidebar where you can have, you know, all of your feeds, starred items from your feeds, collections of your feeds, and then the individual feeds themselves under collections or categories, however they refer to it. And that's already awesome. I like the little collection group because maybe I just want to look at all the stuff I have about technology right now because I'm in a mood to look at technology things. I could go individually by different feed, or I could just look at the overarching all technology. It depends on what your preference is, but that is an option. You can group these things into these categories. Now, after you have all of this stuff set up, you've got feeds, you have categories for the feeds, and you got items in here. Now I can look at, say, hmm, let's look at an item. Let me open this one about Vim here. And it's got nothing, because sometimes they don't actually put the content in it but I could open this up if the, the title looks interesting. Let's try and find one with actual content. There we go. So, okay, Arch Linux leader election results, blah, blah, blah. And you can see that clicking on it actually marks it unread or marks it as read. So if I wanted to just go to something, let, let's see, let's go to home lab here. And then let's say, okay, I'm gonna go to here. And I wanna say I skimmed the titles. I don't like any of those things. Don't wanna read those. I, I checked out this one. Okay, cool, I'm good on that. Now I want to just mark all of these as red. I can just say mark as red up to here. Click that. And now all of those are finished and considered red. I can now do refresh. And now I only have unread items again. I personally have them sorted for, I believe the, is it latest at the top or uh, ascending? So let's see. Yeah, okay. I have oldest at the top, which is how I like to work it. Work it first in, first out kind of thing. And I can filter it to um, just the unread items or all un all items. I want to only look at unread. And then I refresh when I mark them as read. And if you just skim everything, don't like any of the stuff in this feed, you can just mark them all as read and then have it actually like, hey, did you mean to click that? Because maybe you didn't. But overall, that's, that's RSS readers in, in a nutshell. You're reading stuff simply in a centralized source. Now, that's kind of like basic usage, and that's really all it's supposed to do. But there is some additional stuff that's pretty cool. First things first, if you have an OPML file, which I don't know if that 
acronyms, if it's an acronym it's supposed to stand for, but essentially an OPML file contains like all of your feeds. So all of your subscriptions, like if I exported an OPML file from this service, I would have all of these different subscriptions all contained within it. And if I imported that into something else, all of a sudden all my subscriptions are now in that new service. Comma feed can both import and export OPML, as you would expect from a service like this. I can click the plus here to add a new feed and you can add the feed URL for a singular individual feed, or I can create a category and then give it a parent, or I can import an OPML file, which will let me pull in all of my uh, subscriptions from anything else, any other service that deals with the OPML format. So what I can also do is if I go to admin and I believe it's, is it settings? Yes. So admin settings and profile, and I can actually download the export of the OPML file for all of my subscriptions in comma feed. So you do have your interoperability, your data, your subscriptions, your feeds, whatever, none of that stuff is locked in here. You can easily extract it and migrate to a new service if you want to, or easily import your OPML from an existing service to try out comma feed and see if you like it. So I mentioned that we can actually add new categories, new feeds, and I'm gonna do that right now, right in front of you, just to show you what it's like. So I'm going to add a new category. I'm gonna call it YouTube, if my keyboard will work, add. Okay, now we have a new collection or category here called YouTube. I can right click, oh, I can't right click on this one, my bad. If I click on the add again, I'm gonna add a new feed. Now you may not know this, but you can actually add YouTube channels as an RSS feed so that you don't have to look at your YouTube subscriptions inside of the YouTube interface and be dealing with, you know, all of your, well, the way that I was doing it on the Arch Linux machine, you could actually just watch the videos without even dealing with YouTube, but how it actually works here, uh, maybe not so simple, but we'll see. So now I'm gonna grab the YouTube feed or the YouTube URL for my channel. Just grab the channel URL. There used to be RSS links. You can still use them, but they use the antiquated uh, channel URL ID thing. Not worth hunting that down for everybody. You can actually just use the URL. I just learned this this morning. Click next. I'm gonna add it to the category of YouTube, subscribe. And now it has subscribed me to my channel on YouTube under the YouTube category. If I click that, well, it'll show me like the description of stuff, but it won't let me actually watch the video in this interface. That's where it was a little bit different on Arch Linux is that I believe the setup was that it would do something where it would use YouTube DL or some other service to stream the video to you in MPV. Uh, so you could actually just watch the YouTube video without ads, without the, the, the website, without uh, any sort of suggested content. It was literally just give me the videos that I want to see only when there are new videos to see. So there potentially could be automations here because comma feed also has an API and we'll get to that in a second. What you may not also know is that it's also really easy to do um, RSS feeds for Reddit. So if you go to any subreddit URL, so in this case, I'm just doing Unix porn dot RSS, add that to the end of the feed and it will take you to the actual RSS feed for that subreddit. So now I can go back to comma feed and I'm going to probably add it to technology. Yes. And I'm going to add the Unix porn subreddit. If my lagging stops next, add that to technology, subscribe. And now I will now have the feed for Unix porn. Awesome and you can get a little bit of an image preview there. So that's cool. You can use RSS feeds from just about everything, like lots of things that you might not expect have RSS feeds, it, even like, um, what is it? Not Squarespace, Squarespace should have it too. WordPress, WordPress sites might even use the Atom uh, service endpoint configuration. I don't know, it's like an XML thing, but there's a lot of stuff that still provide RSS feeds that you might not expect. And it really just makes it easy to only look at the content that you want and to centralize essentially updates of when there's new content available. So you don't just have things spamming your, your, your email. You could just grab the RSS URL for a given website, article, service, whatever, 
have that go to your reader and you can read the content when you care to read it and not just have people constantly spamming your inbox. Options. Now, moving on, Comma Feed does have an API, a full REST API for entries, categories, feeds, uh, the server itself. There, there's lots of different stuff you can do with this um, REST API. To be honest, I haven't used it at all yet. I haven't really had a use case to, but there might be a perfectly valid reason to use it. Like, let's say you're going to do something where you want to set up an automation because you're using this service and you want to have it do what I mentioned, where it streams the video from the RSS feed entry itself for a video and the YouTube thing. I, I'm sure you could set up some automation with that, but honestly, I have not had a, a use for the REST API at present, but there could be one and it's available. So always love it when things have APIs. So with all of that said, what are the main things I really like about Comma Feed? I like how easy it is to group things and those category groupings, I can just click on one of those and see all the aggregations of all the feeds underneath it. I could also do that for just all of my feeds across every category. Like you can look at things at different levels that include everything below them in a hierarchy. I love the interoperability of the OPML file import and export, so it's not holding your data hostage. I like the fact that you can use an API with this if you wanted to. And then just how easy it is to read things quickly, quickly mark a lot of stuff as read to get it out of your feed, and just quickly catch up on what you care about and star the things that you really want to look at more or save for the future. It's really awesome, and it's all going to my database in the end, so that's really cool. And finally, you can actually generate a feed link for any of your um, categories or collections. Like if I want to say all of my stuff, everything that I have subscribed to, I can go to this little edit icon next to the name, and all is just a default one. You can generate a feed URL so that if somebody wanted to subscribe to everything that I've subscribed to, this will give them everything. And so then they can be subscribed to my aggregation of subscriptions. So you can really go nuts with this. I think it's just a really awesome service. It's not sponsored. I just like the service, wanted to talk about a service. And if you like these videos where I actually review these individual services and like what I use them for, how I use them, how I set them up and all of that, uh, let me know. Because if you like this kind of content, I might find it easier to make some of this kind of content than others. And it might happen more frequently because I've been juggling a lot of stuff. So hope you enjoyed the video. Catch you all in the next one.